today. So Mark chapter 6, we're right where we left off last week, if you've been following with us week after week. Um, so last week we heard how um, Jesus uh, uh, um, healed a woman who'd been bleeding for 12 years. By She came and touched his cloak and was healed. And then they had an encounter together. And then he went to Jairus' home and he raised Jairus' daughter back from the dead. Very powerful uh, instance there. He's near the shore of the sea. Of, he's on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. And, uh, and we're going to hear in our reading today how he left Jairus' home um, and moved on to his hometown. Our readers can come forward. We've got a narrator. Um, she'll be at the pulpit. You got the, you got the microphone. You're ready to roll. All right. And we got Jesus and we got the people. And here's our reading from Mark chapter 6. Are you ready? You're the second one. Okay, here we go. Oh. Jesus left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astound, astounded. They said, Where did this man get all this? What was this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, and jo Ju Joseph and Judas and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their own hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he couldn't and he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among to the village teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, Stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you, they refuse to hear you. As you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good job. Well, friends, grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This is our sixth week in our series, Hashtag Follow Jesus. And the hashtag for today is hashtag so much for coming home. So let's think about home just a little bit today. Would you turn to your neighbor and hopefully someone you don't know uh, or you're not related to perhaps, turn to a neighbor and, um, and share your hometown. Where's your hometown? Tell your neighbor. Where's your hometown? Where's your hometown? Did anyone find that to be a tricky question? Anybody have to think about, well, where's their hometown? It might not be obvious for everyone. It might not be. If you moved around a lot, a hometown might be hard for you. So let's say, raise your hand if you are living in your, what you consider your hometown. Are you living in what you consider your hometown? Who's not living in what they consider their hometown? Okay, pretty good mix today, right? It, ho hometown is a little bit relative, right? If, if you would ask me where my hometown is, I would say Waverly, Iowa. My parents are living in the house that I grew up in still, Waverly, Iowa. But if I were at a conference in Arizona and you asked me where my hometown is, I would say Evansville, Wisconsin because this is where I live now, and this is where I make my home today. So hometown can be a little bit complicated. Now, let's think about what makes something a home. What, let's, let's shout out together as a group. What, we have to work together. What makes it home for you? Family, good. And I hear brothers, it's good. Memories, dogs, pets, church, neighbors. Fun, yeah, where you feel welcome, where, where it's familiar, right? 
What are other kinds of feelings that come up for the word home for you? What does home feel like? Comfort, warmth, safe, God's home, love, secure. Yeah. Home can, say again, memories. Home can be a really beautiful thing. Now, we should acknowledge that home is not great for everyone. Not everyone has a great home life. Not everyone has a home, a place that they would call home. But home is a really powerful concept. And I think that inside each of us is that, is that yearning for home, right? That yearning for home. Well, hashtag so much for coming home. Jesus went to his hometown. Now, as an adult, his hometown was Capernaum. Uh, right on the shore, uh, shores of the Sea of Galilee. But his hometown, where he grew up, was Nazareth. We know that from the Christmas story. And so that's where he went um, on this occasion. He went to his hometown of Nazareth. And he began to preach and, and teach. And some people were astounded. But for the most part, Jesus did not get a great reception. Isn't that pretty sad to think about? That Jesus would go to his hometown. Instead, people are thinking, who does he think he is? Where is he getting all this from? How did he get this wisdom and this knowledge? What, what kind of power does he think he has? And they're probably thinking, I knew him when he was a little kid. He was a carpenter. He's the son of Mary and Joseph. Like, who, who does he think he is? And he was rejected in his hometown. That's pretty sad to think about, that the Son of God was rejected in his hometown. And, and here he is, he, he wants to go home and he wants to do good for his own people. He wants to bring God's love and forgiveness and healing to them. And they say, we don't want you. That Jesus knew that kind of rejection. I think we all know that kind of rejection in our lives at times. I would venture to say that every one of us here has been rejected on occasion. I know one time for me was uh, um, in my swimming career. I swam four years in high school and then in college. And, and my senior year of high school, your peers vote for captain of the swim team, right? Kind of typical that they vote for captain. Well, you know where this is going to end, right? And I put in my time and I worked hard and I thought I was motivational, encouraging. And, and I wasn't voted by my peers to be captain of the swim team. And I was really disappointed. And it felt like a rejection. Like, they don't like me. They don't, they don't like the leadership or the encouragement that I can offer to them. And it, and it felt pretty bad. You know, we're rejected all sorts of different angles we can get rejected from. We, we can get rejected from a work environment. My, um, that reminds me, I was just talking to my dad, and, um, and he said uh, that uh, their pharmacist, my hometown pharmacist, Waverly, Iowa, she'd been there 23 years, and and then she saw him at the gym a few weeks ago and said, Mary, I haven't seen you at the pharmacy. How are you doing? What's going on? And she said, I was let go of my job after 23 years. I was too expensive for them. Let go. Rejected from a, a place where you, you, know, you give your investment and your energy and your heart and, and then just let go. That kind of rejection, that really hurts. We've all been rejected by, maybe it's a job or, or maybe it's uh, by organizations or groups or or maybe it's by the person who was never supposed to reject you and you've experienced that kind of rejection. Someone you loved and cared about and they did that kind of rejection for you. And that stings, man, that, that really hurts. I think we all know a little bit what that is. And we have a Savior who understands rejection. Jesus has been there. He's experienced that so that when we go through that, he has, he has understanding and sympathy for us. Jesus was rejected from his hometown, but, but he went on and he was then rejected by the world. He loved and forgave freely, welcomed all people. And the world said, we don't want that and we don't want you. And they put Jesus on a cross and stretched out his arms and nailed him up there and said, get out of here. We don't want you. And by that rejection on the cross, with Jesus' arms open wide, Jesus declared no one will ever be rejected by God. As Jesus was rejected for us, that no one else will ever be rejected for no other reason. For, for the color of their skin or for their sexual orientation or for their marital status or their economic status or their past misdeeds, for nothing. That God will never reject us. That God will always welcome us home. Jesus experienced that rejection so that we don't ever have to experience that from God. 
Well, there's a second part to our scripture reading. Let's look at that just a little bit. After Jesus was rejected in Nazareth, he went to his disciples. Maybe, maybe that was his, real, his home while he was on earth with his friends, with his family, the disciples. And he sent them out two by two. He sent the 12 of them out two by two. In other places, he sent even more disciples. He had, he had more than just 12 followers, uh, dozens and dozens of followers, actually. It, on this occasion, he sent them out two by two, and he sent them out with only one thing. Did you catch it in our reading? A staff. A staff. No extra tunic, no extra sandals, no change of underwear, no money in their belt. Just take what you've got and take your staff. And he said, go into these villages and stay at people's homes. So much for coming home, right? So, so he, 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 he sent them into people's homes that they might be welcomed into people's homes. And he said, he said, when you go to a home, stay there. Don't keep moving around, dotting along. Stay there in a home and let them show you care and hospitality and love. And I think that was also about, it was also about developing caring, trusting relationships. And they were to stay in these homes with people and share God's love with them and bring God's peace and bring God's healing to them. Stay in their homes that they might find a home with God. I think that's one of the reasons I became a pastor is that I might help people find their home with God. That's all of our calling from God is that we find a home with God for ourselves and then we help other people find that home with God. We get sent out two by two in all sorts of kinds of ways. We get sent out also that they that, that the people in our lives would also know a home with God because, friends, that's where our home is. That's ultimately our home. Our home is with God. Yes, after this life, there is a home prepared for us in heaven. Absolutely. We rejoice in that and we cling to that promise. And during this life, we find a home with God, whether we are in Waverly, Iowa, or Evansville, Wisconsin, or in Afghanistan, serving with the army. We find our home with God. And we help one another to experience that home with God. A home where we will always be welcome. A home where we will never be rejected. Thanks be to God for Jesus Christ who leads us to our home with God. Amen.